to me it looks like something definitely otherworldly, something mysterious, almost awe-inspiring in some cases. The impressions I get from driving into the Altamont, say, coming up Highway 580, it's kind of a mixture of awe and surreal. It just seems like these are strange structures placed here by some otherworldly creature. They just don't fit into our normal realm of perception. Maybe that's the trouble what birds have with it too, and bats. The Altamont landscape is really pretty unique. It's a low elevation range of hills sort of sandwiched or bookended by higher mountains on either end and it's a north-south trending mountain range so it pretty much stands essentially broadside to incoming winds. The Altamont Pass is a great place for wind because as the air comes in from the west it has to rise up it gets squeezed together as it passes over the pass and it's squeezed north to south because there are hills on either side of the pass. And when you squeeze the air down as it flows, it speeds up. And high speed air is exactly what you want to generate wind energy. These turbines are creating electrical energy. So each turbine has a generator up in the hub of it that's spinning around a set of coils. And as they spin, they create the electricity. So the electricity is actually brought directly from the wind turbine through cables into the ground. And then it goes into a transformer and then it's sent over to a um, substation or a transfer station. That's kind of a key element in any um, energy development is you, you can produce energy, but you need to get it onto the grid. These turbines that are behind me and off to my side are one megawatt turbines. That means um, they can produce up to one megawatt electricity and that's just a standard measure for a lot of electrical production. One megawatt typically powers about 750 homes. In the old days, wind turbines produced AC, alternating current electricity. That's what you use in your home. And the problem is that in order to produce the AC energy, the turbines had to spin at a reasonably precise speed so they needed certain wind speeds, a very narrow range of wind speeds in order to work so they could synchronize their electricity with the electricity they were giving you in your house. By making DC electricity, you can use electronics to turn the DC into AC, and that allows the wind turbines to spin over a wider range of wind speeds so they can suck more energy out of the air. These turbines were installed in 2006. This wind farm came online in 2007. It is known as a repowered wind farm, which means they replace the old infrastructure. Wind energy production has been in existence since the late 1970s, so there's lots of old-style wind turbines. Pretty much every wind turbine that's been developed has been experimented with or used in the Altamont. Um, they tend to range in size from about 60 kilowatts on upwards to roughly 700 kilowatts, three-fourths of a megawatt. And their sizes range anywhere from 30 feet tall to 150 to maybe 200 feet. And that's really the old generation style wind turbines. And again, they were not very efficient. They only operated at about 14 to 18 percent efficiency. So there's been a high premium placed on repowering wind farms. Um, not only is it more efficient in terms of electrical output and therefore economics, it's also much, it's a much better situation in terms of environmental impact, in terms of um, bird kills and raptor kills, because the thought being that on average you can take, say, 10 to 15 of the old style wind turbines and replace them with one, you know, mega turbine, one next generation turbine. So each one of these one megawatt turbines has effectively replaced about 12 of the old style 60 kilowatt turbines. So that way, just by virtue of the fact that you have fewer wind turbines, you have less likely probability of impacting as many birds or having as many bird strikes. At Altamont Pass, the blades of the wind generators make whooshing noises as they spin around. Now, in high winds, the tips of those blades can travel 200 miles an hour. You've heard a car rush by you, even an electric car, 
with no engine noise, making a whooshing noise as it went by. Imagine the sound made by a 200 mile an hour car going by. You still have burn strikes. You cannot eliminate them at all because um, if any propeller rotating in an air column is bound to strike things, be it birds, be it bats, be it insects. And even a human would have trouble dodging that if they were like jogging and had to run in between some blades or around it. Um, so the perception, the ability of raptors and birds to perceive a rapidly moving, rotating propeller is probably, it, it probably exceeds their ability to perceive the blade tip. Certainly associated with wind energy production is its impact on birds and raptors, and in particular its effect on golden eagles. They seem to be struck by wind turbine blades at a higher rate. So that's one issue that the East Bay Regional Park District is working on uh, very intensively to find ways to help lessen those impacts and to help inform repowering decisions and how we site and locate wind turbines. Raptors, golden eagles, they don't use the landscape randomly. So if we can lock down, if we can figure out how they use the landscape, then we can better inform where we can put turbines that will have less likelihood to strike golden eagles and hopefully reach a more self-sustaining population.